This seven-year-old boy from Guatemala hasn't seen his mother for a month. It takes a moment before the weeping begins. He's sad, says his mother, but we are going to be together now. The White House says 500 children have reportedly been reunited with their families since May, finding the rest a bureaucratic nightmare. At the border, more confusion. There are reports some charges against parents have been dropped to prevent splitting up families, but officials insist zero tolerance remains in place. The military is preparing to house as many as 20,000 people on three bases. It's unclear if those shelters would be for families detained together and the outrage grows. Protesters crowded outside the Homeland Security Secretary's home this morning, trying to wake her up with recorded cries of migrant children. This congressman played those same recordings on the floor of the House today until he was stopped for breaching decorum. The gentleman will suspend. Rather than soothe tensions, the president provokes them. You hear the other side, you never hear this side. Inviting families of people killed by illegal immigrants to the White House, playing one horror off another. My separation is permanent. Sarah's never coming home. I never get to take a selfie with her again. The families were rally regulars in 2016. Fear-mongering helped get Trump elected and he's not abandoning it now. Never mind studies that show illegal immigrants are convicted of crimes far less frequently than U.S. citizens. In fact, Trump is now telling Republicans in Congress to stop wasting their time on immigration legislation until after the midterms when he anticipates a red wave of newly elected Republicans. Chaos and division are not just characteristics of Trump's presidency. They also appear to be his election strategy for November and beyond. Lindsay Duncombe, CBC News, Washington.